Hey there Seekers, welcome back to Wild Lotus Tarot and to your weekly tarot reading. Just a couple of very short announcements to let you know. We'll be getting started with the abundance updates next. So keep an eye out for those because they will be dropping really soon. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram and on TikTok. And I do post other readings on there throughout the week for you guys to keep you going between the weekly readings and the monthly readings. Should you want a personal reading, you can arrange that. There is a link down here to my website where you can purchase those should you choose to uh, guys if you could drop me a like and leave me a comment if you enjoy the videos that would be amazing uh, the YouTube algorithm isn't that supportive of small content creators and it just helps me um, share the messages of, of hope um, ascension and awakening which is my purpose in this world uh, also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already guys that means that you have um, a little uh, notification in uh, your subscriptions when I do upload so that you won't miss a video so thanks for being here guys I really appreciate each and every one of you and bringing your energy to my channel let's head to your reading now hi there Gemini welcome to your weekly tarot reading let's see what may be on the cards for you for the week Gemini Getting started here with the Work Your Light Oracle. We'll then go to the Moonchild Tarot for an overarching tarot energy. And I will be using the Rider Weight and the Star Child Tarot Kashik for the tarot positions. All right, let's see what we have for the oracles. Gemini, I have got the Great Gathering. It's all coming together, intuitive hits and soul tribe. This is a divine confirmation that stars are aligning and you know plans are maybe formulating behind the scenes sometimes we might feel like there's not enough action there's not enough happening maybe we feel like that soulmate's never going to come in well this is a real indication that you know rest assured sometimes things are happening behind the scenes right in the in the divine um backstage right the strings are being pulled stars are aligning we don't really know maybe that soulmate is wrapping up another connection Maybe there's more pieces to fall into place. So trust your intuition and also be mindful of the people that might be coming forward. Soul tribe, you might be meeting people that can help you along the way or that give you a piece for your journey. And I've got inner temple, devotion, tune into the portal of your heart. We can all do with more of this heart energy, dropping out of the mind, out of the ego and into the body where we can actually feel where we can access our intuition. We can do that by meditating or spending time in nature. Just making sure that we're not being overruled by the thoughts, by the mental energy, which has its place. But not if we're in it all the time. All right, we'll take the one that's <laughs> turned over there. It is the Knight of Wands. This is Sagittarius for me in the Minor Arcana. And the Knight of Wands can be an energy of moving towards your passions, your desires, a new frontier, something that lights you up. It can be a messenger, a messenger of passion or opportunity that comes into your life really quickly that maybe helps you manifest something that you are really enthusiastic about. So we'll see how that shapes up. Let's go to the tarot now and Jim and I will start with the energy of the recent past. Oh, here we go. There's your message, Eight of Wands. Absolutely be expecting a communication. I have got the Lovers, number six, Gemini. That's your card in the Major Arcana. Let's get the outcome. Outcome or result energy. Oh, the Eight of Cups. Okay. Seven of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. Get the clarifiers now. Clarifying the Eight of Wands, I have got the Two of Wands. Clarifying the Lovers, Seven of Wands. Clarifying the Eight of Cups, I have the Ace of Pentacles. And I'm going to grab another one for the Lovers. Wheel of Fortune, wow, okay. Okay, <laughs> one more for the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, the Fool, that is all just perfect, guys. Five of Pentacles is at the bottom of this deck here. Okay, 
Well, the general reading, guys, I do try and uh, keep these fairly general, but some of you are transitioning from a situation that has just not been cutting it for you. I've got the Five of Pentacles here, which describes that situation. A situation where you might feel a little bit alone and left out in the cold, kind of isolated. Sometimes we can be in relationships, romantic or friendships, where we actually feel alone, right? We feel like we're not getting the emotional connection, the love, the heart energy that we desire. For some of you, you have experienced a loss of some sort. It could be financial. It could have been on the job front. And it's put you in a kind of a feeling of lack or hardship. So with the Five of Pentacles, you know, we're feeling into that energy. However, you know, when we kind of feel all of the loss and the lack, Sometimes we can spiral into that victim mentality and it can attract more of that loss. So it's important for us to shift out of this, right? There is a big shift that wants to come in here for you. Sometimes it's acknowledging that a present situation is not working as we'd wanted it to, so we're needing to, to move away from it. With the Five of Pentacles, you are asked to take a step back, Gemini, and see the big picture. Maybe seeing things with clarity, exactly how they are seeing things for what they are, what they're worth, maybe seeing, you know, through the fog here, we've got the Seven of Pentacles, and sorry, the Seven of Cups in the reading. And the, the big message here is that even in our darkest times, you know, spirit is with us, and things are coming together, but we've got to make sure that we don't sort of stay stuck in that energy of lack or loss, because we can kind of like hold ourselves a little bit stagnant, and we can hold ourselves back from the opportunities that are coming um, in for us. What you're being encouraged to do, Gemini, is to keep moving forward at the moment. I've got the Two of Wands and I've got the Eight of Wands here, and I'm just tuning into that Knight of Wands energy as you're overarching. So the Eight of Wands here for me is about swift movement, change, getting going again. And the Two of Wands says, okay, at the moment, we might be at the crossroads, but it's time to take a step forward and it's time to take action. The Two of Wands is that, okay, you know what, I'm in the Five of Pentacles energy, something's got to give, but now I'm going to need to weigh up some options and decide what direction to go in. It's when that feeling of your life in review and you're getting ready to take a step beyond your comfort zone and take the fool's journey into the unknown. Some of you may be leaving a comfort zone, a home, a relationship, a job that you really know well in order to pursue what I'm feeling is a passionate new direction or you feel is going to be more aligned or light you up in a different way. But there is some trepidation there. There's a little bit of fear around it because you don't really know what's waiting at the end of that path for you. You just know that you need to broaden your horizons and you know, you're being strongly called to do that, right? That's what I'm really feeling here. Um, of course, you know, we've just had that, um, the big new moon, and that could have been when you sort of really decided, right, okay, well, I think it was on the 11th of Feb, I really need to take action here, it is time. So with the Eight of Wands too, there could be some communication, a message that comes in for you that is kind of like the, let's say, the, the trigger that really makes you decide and it could come in with that Knight of Wands. It could be a truth revealed. Uh, it could be a answer, something that you've been waiting for. Yes, you got the job. Yes, you got the property. You can now relocate. This can be an energy of travel or relocation. Generally, this is a message that comes through the airwaves that moves you in some way. It can also be a divine intervention, a synchronicity or something like that. And it's like, you know what? I've stood at the threshold for too long. Now it is time to jump. And I think as soon as you initiate that change and that forward movement, it's going to be quick. Knight of Wands. So that's what I'm feeling there, guys. It is a stepping, stepping over the threshold here and really, really getting moving towards your passions, towards your desires. Yeah, look at this. Seven of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Lovers, your card, Gemini. So there's a real coming back to power after that Five of Pentacles energy here and an energy of getting back into the universal flow. The Seven of Wands can be an energy of resistance. Maybe up until now you've kind of held on to a situation, a person, or whatever it is for you that is a little bit past its use by date, past its time. 
Maybe some of you have just been feeling stuck, but you have been resisting change. Because the Seven of Wands, can, for me, can be that energy of going against the grain or fighting to stay in the, in the current situation, right? Really giving it your, your all. Maybe you're in a situation that's kind of got to the point where you're feeling like it's uh, become a challenge. You have to kind of defend yourself. A relationship that's got to the stage where you're just picking at each other. A job where your boss or manager always seems to be pointing out what you're doing wrong. It's that kind of energy. The Wheel of Fortune says, you know what? It is time for big change. Big fortune changes and a big karmic shift. Potentially some of you are closing out a really big karmic cycle as well. Maybe karmic lessons. Maybe a 10-year cycle with the Wheel of Fortune. When the wheel turns though, it generally brings us into a whole new chapter and we have the full in this reading. So I'm really thinking that's the case. It says that it's playing out in divine timing here. And generally when the wheel comes in, we need to sort of surrender and release and flow with that current rather than just trying to push back. When we push back and push back and we ignore the changes that are trying to move us to the new chapter, we can get the tower moments, guys, because that's the universe lovingly stepping in and going, well, you know what? If you don't jump into the new, if you don't release, if you don't leave that comfort zone, then I'm going to create a circumstance. So you will. Where are we moving towards? Well, the lovers, your card. So into power, into the sixth energy, which is, you know, joy, love, harmony, balance, happiness, maybe towards deeper emotional connection and soul connections as well. So it's a beautiful, beautiful energy here. You are being moved between this and the Eight of Wands. It can be sudden, divinely um, intervened change. Outcome energy. We've got the Fool, we've got the Eight of Cups, Ace of Pentacles and Seven of Cups. So let's go to the Seven and the Eight. I mean, here we're going from the Seven of Cups to the Eight of Cups. The Seven of Cups is this energy of, up until now, I think there's been a bit of confusion around the situation, right? We were kind of in the illusion of the Five of Pentacles, in the lack, feeling stuck, can't move, nothing's materializing, nothing's happening, everything I want and desire is just held at an arm's length, and I'm confused about the next move. Well, the cards are saying, you know what, it's time to get clarity on the situation, take a step back. Some of you are realizing that's a fundamental piece missing in this situation. A relationship with somebody who you've just got a fundamental value that's just not in alignment. The job that will never give you the money or the recognition or the responsibility that you're really desiring. You've had eight cups, not bad. But what you're really desiring, Gemini, is to move on to the ninth cup, the cup of wish fulfillment. I'm seeing the star there, which is the Divine Wish Fulfillment card, is saying that what you truly deeply wish for in that temple of the heart is not in the current situation. And intuitively, you can really feel that. And it's with that deep knowing, Gemini, that you decide to turn your back on it and transition into that unknown that we have talked about. And that's exactly the Fool's journey. I mean, the Fool takes a leap of faith sometimes a blind one, into the unknown. And it's about not even really knowing what the destination is, but trusting in that journey and starting to take those first steps on the path. The fool is really um, wanting to connect with, see, we've got the inner temple, the heart lined up here, sorry, lit up here. Having a few problems talking today, sorry guys. Um, so it's about following the desires of the heart, what lights you up, the passions of the Knight of Wands, and that's what is moving us, right? So we're making the decisions to not engage with opportunities that are not feeling fully, um, you know, in alignment with us. We're not going to go into another relationship where there is a deal breaker, not next time. It's about following exactly the rebel heart desires here, going without the baggage of the past, and just moving forward, even if we feel like we are going into the unknown. And the Ace of Pentacles here is the promise of the new along this journey, on this new path, the missing piece to the picture. It can be a new commitment, a new home, a new job, uh, a new way to make money, like it's the Pentacles, it's our physical, tangible resources. This is the reward 
for making the transition, right? For actually following our divine path, surrendering to your divine flow. So that's what I'm seeing here. I mean, the Ace of Pentacles is the reward that comes in for the person who has walked the path, gone through the portal, has transformed their life. So it all starts with letting go of that situation where we feel like we were hard done by. You know, there might be a communication, a message or a divine intervention that's coming in that gives you that final nudge to step beyond your comfort zone and start the new journey in the direction of the Wheel of Fortune towards greater passions and desires. Of course, guys, nothing happens unless we take action. Sometimes the universe moves us, but generally we have to be the one to jump first. Okay, Gemini, well, I'm going to leave it there, and I hope you enjoyed this reading. Do keep in mind it is a general reading for the collective. It may or may not be for you this time round. If you're called to share, drop me a message and a comment, I should say. <laughs> I do read them all, guys, and um, I just find that it helps me get to know you guys, connect with your energy, and see what the collective themes are. I will see you back here for another one next week, Gemini. Bye for now.